Hi. It's Nikki and Rachel again here from the Stitch Sisters and we're back with our, another of our videos all on fabric from Minerva. This time we're on wools. Now wools are all fabrics which come from fibres from animals, okay? Mostly that will be sheep, but you also get uh, fibres from rabbits. Mm -hmm from goats yeah and from llamas yes so any of those combinations will give you a wool fabric so when you're looking at the labels in your clothes um mm. they might refer to it as lamb's wool or sheep's wool right. um, so that you know that it's actually come from that animal mm -hmm. um other times they will refer to mohair which um is usually from rabbits yes um alpaca alpaca which is from, which llamas. Is from llamas and cashmere uh, yes. It comes from goats. Yes. Um, so if you see any of those things on there, then you'll know which animal they come from. Yes. Sometimes it will just say wool. <coughs> yeah. So most of the time, if it's from a sheep, they'll just say wool rather mm. than specify. Um, usually if it's mohair or if it's angora or if it's um, cashmere, mm. then they will say that because that's considered a premium product. Because they're, they're more specialists. So yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We don't actually have any... Um, uh, mohair, angora, or um, alpaca to show you today. We mm. are concentrating mainly on, on wools, um, although we do have some cashmere coating to yes. show you. So you yeah. can see some goat as well yes. as some sheep. <laughs> and you can get wools, can be uh, very often on Minerva's website, which is what we we spotted when we were looking into this is that uh, they tend to show you where or tell you where the, the wool is from. Mm -hmm. So you can buy British wool yeah you can buy italian wool i've seen french, french wool yeah. you any, anything else there's, there's a lot so no. obviously any country and so it gives you an idea where it's come from yeah but i quite so like I that like because that. these days yes. we we want to know the provenance of everything that we use we like to yeah. know where our meat comes from and we like yeah. to know where our vegetables come from and mm. it's quite nice to know that we can also mm. get details on where our fabric comes yes. from. yes and it's special because it is a, a natural fiber so you can you know i think it adds to the provenance of it yes absolutely so in in terms of properties of wool, the reason why you might choose wool over another fabric is uh -huh. mainly for warmth. Yes. Um, so wool Which is, is why very we warm. We specialise in it in this country, to be honest. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, it's also considered slightly more luxurious, um, yes. I think, than cotton. Um, so it, it, some of it has very similar properties to cotton, and sometimes it's much more furry and soft to the touch. Yeah. Um, so it's mainly associated with suitings, with um, coatings, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but by suitings that can be jackets it can be skirts it can be trousers it can be suits, waistcoats yes. um, yeah, and any that. of the yes. components of a suit mm. um, so when you say suitings you don't have to think about three-piece suits you no. can just think about the key elements of that mm. um, generally they're suited to, they're suited to suiting <laughs> because uh, they're warmer but also because they tend to have more structure yes um, and that's why they're great for tailoring and they're very durable as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get some very, very fine wools. Um, mm. So if you go to a very fancy tailor on Savile Row, they will have a whole range of very fine wools, which oh. are still very thin, a uh, yes. whole range of weights from thin yes. to very heavy, depending on what you're looking for. Uh -huh. um, and the uh, what determines how fine a wool is, is the length of the fibres. Okay. So the longer hairs, um, or the softer hairs, uh -huh. um, tend to make a finer wool. Mm -hmm. um, and the shorter, coarser hairs will make a rougher wool okay. and obviously the finer hairs are more expensive <coughs> and are then put into production for finer fabrics yes. and vice versa so having said all of that about suitings and mm. coatings the first fabric that i wanted to show you was a little bit of a revelation for me because this mm. isn't one we asked for from minerva they just sent it to us and i'm very glad they did this is a wool chalet now i've heard of chalet lots of times before but i always think of viscose and rayon when you're talking about chalet whereas this is a wool chalet and you can see how thin it is yeah um, and the it's, weave it's look, quite sheer yeah. and you can actually see the weave but yeah. it feels so lovely and oh. you can feel how much warmer it is so yeah. um chalet often is quite cool to the touch yeah um whereas this isn't at all it's lovely and warm and i think that if you wanted to make a pussy bow blouse for the winter oh that would be lovely um then mm. or any kind of blouse for the winter mm. then this would be the perfect thing because it still gives you that lovely drapey sheer quality mm. 
Mm. The Anderson um, blouse, so over yeah, it. Yeah, anything, anything like, like that, that would yeah. be absolutely lovely. So that comes in a range of different colours. Um, Minerva do it for twenty nine ninety nine. Mm. Now I know that that seems like a lot of money, but you only mm. have to touch this to know that it is worth it. Definitely, yeah. um, and it just feels very, very luxurious. Yes. Really, really very nice. It is a hundred percent wool, um, uh -huh. so you are getting a lot yes. for your money. So um, we're so that's on to worsted wool now, which I'll show you a little example of. And this is basically used quite often for suiting. So you can see it's very strong, it's very durable, it's made from very long fibres which have been tightly woven together. And it's great for suits because you can tell the quality of it. You can give it a little squidge with your hands, press it all in and it just wants to return to its original shape so any creases tend to sort of drop out quite quickly mm. which is great for suiting uh, did you know that it originates from a town in Norfolk where, Norfolk? They, where they originally made it in the 12th century ah. you see all of these little snippets of information we're giving you you're probably never going to use them again <laughs> so that's uh... worsted wool you can tell it's quite it's quite heavy it's quite a nice weight I have been looking for the perfect fabric for a pair of trousers oh yes so these are I brilliant think for trousers wide leg trousers, trousers in particular yeah. because um, like it will feel really lovely trousers. but wide leg trousers do tend to crease a lot don't they there's yeah. a lot of fabric to yeah. get creased up when you sit down and stuff. So um, a worsted will be perfect for yes. that. So £21 per metre yeah. from Minerva. Uh -huh. But you, you wouldn't go into a high street shop and buy a nice quality pair of trousers for less than 40 pounds no absolutely so and these ones would fit you perfectly and yeah beautiful quality yeah it's just so soft it's, it's lovely. also worth noting that this fabric is actually extra wide so it's 62 inches oh, wide wow. and a lot of wool for my legs that's yeah, good <laughs> exactly a lot of wools are a little bit uh oh, wider. wider and the reason for that is because you can cut a whole trouser leg out of the width of the fabric oh wow and i know normally you would cut on these straight grain yes um, but if you cut on the cross grain you yeah. tend to get a little bit more give which sometimes you want for suiting yeah um, so uh, so that's why they tend to make them extra wide because just those extra couple of inches will make the difference mm. between a tall person being able to cut their leg out um, so yes yeah, so you Makes get away with less more. of it than you Absolutely. thought mm -hmm. so this is uh, it, this is a wool blend as well I haven't mentioned no this. that one is 100% wool oh. <laughs> She's looking, at, she's looking at my notes, but yes. that brings me on to <laughs> well, this fabric here, which is a wool blend, okay? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just give you an example of a product that isn't 100% wool. So technically this could be classed as a synthetic, yeah. but often suitings in particular are mixed with mm. other synthetic fabrics to mm. increase the, the properties. Mm. So wool will make it very warm, but it yes. will make it uh, quite thick and uh, quite rough to the touch, unless it's very fine wool like the worsted that we just saw yes um so the way that you can get around making uh suiting a little bit cheaper is to, um, is to use a else. percentage of wool mm. so this one here has 20 percent wool in it i believe mm -hmm. um but it's also mixed with polyester and viscose so those two things will do different things so the polyester will make it more durable because mm -hmm. wool is quite a weak fiber really unless yeah. it's very tightly woven together so it will make it more durable. It also significantly reduces the cost of production. Of course. Whereas the viscose makes it lovely and soft. Mm -hmm. and gives it some drape um, so it just means adding both of those synthetics to it I mean mm -hmm. that it's a really good all-round suiting um, but it does significantly reduce the price like we said so this one is currently being sold on Minerva's web website for $7.99 a meter wow. it is reduced from $15.99 a meter because it is a very good quality wool suiting even though yeah. it's a wool blend often a sign of a good quality wool is a lovely salvage mm. like that um, so you know it's happy. English wool um, <laughs> and it does feel very lovely and again just like the the worsted it is very crease resistant so yeah. if I scrunch that up there you can see that it naturally returns it's got slight creases yeah. in there but give that a couple of minutes and they would have dropped out completely because suits is one of those things you don't wash them regularly no you don't no so and they have to be dry cleaned anyway but you generally um, so get lots of wears lots out of, of wear them before out of you would consider so doing it, that so it couldn't be in any fabric which would crease because no. it would just be a, be a waste of time you'd yeah. want to be ironing it all the time so exactly. It's they're fantastic. Excellent. With another soft one. We're getting our hands out again, ladies. Your so favourite. My favourite. So Strokey one. I had to wrestle this off Rachel just so I could tell you what it was all about. It's a bit like a comfort blanket. You could yeah, just like, lose like, yourself just sit there stroking, stroking and rocking. It. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the fluffiness. But this is flannel. 
So this is exactly the same as the brushed cotton that I showed you in our cottons video, which I'll link to up here. But instead of it just being brushed on one side, it's been brushed on both sides. And flannel originates from Wales. Oh, it? it does, yes. Not, I'm sure this one in particular, but all the flannels, that's where they originally uh, did all the brushing and, and, and did created all the brushing. It. They did all they the did brushing. All the brushing. <laughs> <laughs> that's your technical explanation. That. It is. <laughs> this one uh, from Minerva is £22 per metre. Yeah, uh, £22.99. It, it'd be great for jackets. This, this is a sort of a medium weight one. You can get heavier ones, yeah. um, which would be great for out, like outerwear, that kind of thing. Yeah, Again. you can also get different densities, and that just means um, how tightly the uh, the fibres are, are packed together. Yeah. Um, so um, if it's a looser density, it's going to be less warm. Okay. Um, and it's going to be lighter as well. And if it's a heavier density, it's going to be very thick and it's going to be it's, very tight. Um, so you can tell the warmth by how much you can see through it. If I hold mm. this up to the light, I can see through it, so I know it's quite lightweight. Yeah. It drapes beautifully as it well, does. doesn't it? Yeah. So you would be able to make more drapey suiting garments oh, so out of it. Yes. Um, so it would make a lovely skirt, very warm yes. skirt, I think, Ooh, um, or a nice, nice little jacket. Yes, very nice. That's, very nice. That's going on the list. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be a very long list. <laughs> what the do next have? one I have to show you um, is a wool twill. So we've talked about twill in several of the other videos already. This is gorgeous. Twill refers to the weave. So let me hold that up, see if you can see those. Oh, you can see that well there. You can see those diagonal ridges there. That is the weave. Um, and this is a wool twill. It's been woven very tightly, which most suitings are. Mm. Um, and this, I think, is predominantly designed for suiting. It has a very crisp hand. Um, it's a very sort of a sharp fabric, if that makes sense. It's not sharp as in spiky. No. But it just feels very crisp. And mm. it'd be great for sartorial garments of any kind. You'd be mm. able to get really crisp lines in there. Um, you'd be able to, with beautiful top stitching, I think oh. you could create some really beautiful things. Um, so this one is 29 dollars to nine a meter it's 62 mm. inches um mm. and uh, and it is just absolutely gorgeous if you wanted um a very smart suit um mm. this would be what to go for or a very smart jacket or a very I'm, smart I'm thinking of trousers. trousers again <laughs> i'm thinking yeah. trousers because i could have my worsted wool ones for the winter months yes and then i could have my twill ones for when it gets slightly warmer because although although this is warm mm -hmm. it's not as warm as the worst is yes. so you can take it to different levels yes i think that's gorgeous it's probably worth mentioning with wools when you're talking about making everyday wear mm -hmm. um that you do have to bear in mind that they do need to be washed at a lower temperature yes so that used to be a hand wash but these days most modern washing machines come with a wool setting yeah um and you would definitely want to do it on a cool wash yeah. um otherwise you're going to shrink it um, because wool fibres when they're heated do naturally shrink yes. significantly more than other fibres. We've fibers. all had that. We've all had a jumper that's we been have. accidentally put yes. in the washing machine. Yes, exactly. Right. right, so we've covered lots of fabrics that are ideal for suiting yes. and now we're moving into slightly heavier weight wool fabrics which are ideal for coating yes. or coats. Um, and the first one that I'm going to show you is this lovely... <gasps> hot pink boiled <laughs> wool <laughs> so boiled wool is basically a wool, wool uh, fabric um which has been had a lot of heat and water and agitation applied if you've heard of felting i think felting is a is quite a, a popular craft these days yes um but it's where you're effectively matting all the fibers yes. together um, with lots of needles with lots things. of yeah. lots of heat and pressure yes um, and it gives you this lovely soft uh, fluffy texture. This one's oh, quite a thin boiled wool. I've made things before with very heavy boiled wools and I have to say this is lovely Yeah. because this would work well for cardigans yeah, as well as coats because it is so much more lightweight. Now what you'll find <laughs> is that... bank balance. I, I, just know, I know. What you'll find <laughs> is that depending on the density of the boiled wool there will be a fair amount of natural Ooh. stretch in there. Okay? Is that just going one way? Um, oh, there's a little too. bit the yeah. other way, um, so that that's way. why it would work well for cardigans. It yeah. doesn't bounce back brilliantly. If you see when I pull that, it does curl at the edges. Now, so you wouldn't want to make a stretch garment out of it. No. Um, you would you would use it when you wanted something that had a bit of give in it, so a mm -hmm. bit for comfort. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't want to use it in place of a jersey or something like that. Um, so like a slouchy cardigan, something that's not yeah, requiring yeah, too much stretch lovely. to get on um, you. But if I hold it that way, you can see how thin it is. 
Yeah. Um, and boiled walls can be much thicker than that. Um, they can also have a much rougher texture yeah. um, because the, the thicker the yarns it, used... Yeah, we're just joking down here. We'll have to up and stroke. Um, so uh, the thicker the yarns used to create it, um, the, the, the um, rougher the texture is going to be. This um, is, is slightly softer on one side than on the other as well. Uh, slightly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's almost like you can tell which side is the is the front that's yeah the but side. again i think it'd be one of those where you'd have a choice then. with which way you want it to be the right side yeah. of the fabric um, yeah. so um i don't think there is a right side necessarily and um, is that 100 percent wool? which one um that one is i don't think it is boiled wool is very rarely 100 percent okay. um, this particular one is 30 percent wool 70 percent polyester okay um in a way that's good because there's a less of a wool content you're going to get less shrinkage the mm -hmm. polyester will give it durability mm -hmm. um but also more importantly makes it cheaper to produce um so yeah. this one is 13.99 a meter it is on sale it's originally 18.99 a meter um but for this quality i think that's a really it's really lovely price lovely. and what a color oh you wouldn't color. want a hot pink jacket <laughs> i didn't know i did but now i think i do <laughs> we're fighting over it what have you got i have got some boucle to show you so boucle is made by um having a more looped knitting process mm -hmm. and it's to do, and then that's created by having different tensions and uh and speeds things, yeah. speeds as it's actually being formed so that you get these little looped effects now this one is a is a non-stretch boucle but you can see you end up with these sort of like raised parts so you get mm. more more loops coming on one side and and less on the other and i'm guessing that depending on how you adjusted the tension you'd get bigger loops and that's yes. what creates that more sort of messy looking boucle yes, more of a knitted the actual like hand knitting effect yes you get big loops yes. coming out and of often it. it looks like they use different colors Yes. in the process as well because you you get lots of speckled boucles yes. like a lot of the the coco chanel style yes boucles in different fibers. have multiple yes. colors in them yeah don't they? so this would be great for a jacket because it does have structure it's got a tiny bit of stretch Ti i mean tiny tiny bit of yeah. stretch but it's got so much structure and it's so warm mm. but it's, it's great for outerwear that kind of yeah. thing i wouldn't imagine making um skirts or dresses or anything like that from it no but great for jackets yeah. and uh and outerwear i think it's yeah gorgeous. i think both of these are ideal fabrics coatings, um, really. for mm. coatings but designs where you want a little yeah. bit of drape yes. so waterfalls um and Water things up. that have more elaborate collars that you don't want to stand directly upright so if yes. you want a coating a with some drape with a bit yeah. of softness to it then either a boiled wool mm -hmm. or a um boucle would be good yes. for that and this one again it's a mix it's uh 20.99 it's 20.99 per meter but it's 50 percent wool 30 percent viscose and 20 percent polyester we've gone to the thickest and to the warmest and to the softest so i've got cashmere wool here and this i will show you you can see how soft and beautiful that is and the color and on the that. color my really gosh, love that color it is beautiful so this is a, it's a blend cashmere comes from cashmere in india that's where it originated and it is made from the wool of goats yes but not just any wool oh no goats. oh no it's made from the fluffy hair underneath their chins and, un and their underbellies so I was just like which I just don't be in I'm just doing this it's just making me feel happy <laughs> <laughs> so you can imagine how little hair you get from a goat every year just from one section of yes. the goat so it takes uh, two goats yeah one year to make a jumper which is just amazing and that just shows you how why they have to charge so much for yeah absolutely jumpers. so this is a wool coating so it's a bit more structured I guess you, you wouldn't make you could make a slouchy cardigan out of it. So it's got too much structure, I think. No, I Maybe. think I think this it's is definitely coating. coats. Yeah, coats, coats only. and jackets, yeah. really. Yeah. But, but and I'm going to say this, it is currently on sale oh. at Minerva. It was. Twenty pounds per meter, and it's down to sixteen pounds per meter. So if you're and looking to make a coat, yes, even if it's not till next winter, yeah, this is what you want. Yes. I think it is gorgeous. It is probably worth pointing out though that this fabric, as gorgeous as it is, it does only have ten percent 
cashmere. Yes. Um, but that is quite common. Like we said, cashmere is very, very expensive. So 100% cashmere, very oh, rare. And yeah. usually it's only available in a knitted form rather yes. than a woven. So jumpers you would get and jumpers and stuff in 100% cashmere. Yeah. But mostly for fabric, the cashmere fibres are added to something else. So in this case, it's 70% sheep's wool yeah. um, with 10% cashmere added. And then it's got a little bit of polyester in there as well, which is just going to make it a little bit mm. more durable and wearable mm. and washable. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. I'm just going to... Just going to here. wrap yourself in that whilst um, I tell you this. all about Melton. Oh, I love it. So I Melton. have my favourite coat um, that I made last year. Mm. I made in a red Melton. This is a, a Melton and Melton is a fulled wool. So the fulling is a bit like felting. Okay. Um, heat and pressure and uh, agitation is applied to the fabric to compress the fibres. And it makes this very dense uh, fabric which feels very much like felt. Um, yes. But it's going to be much warmer than felt. Um, I, the thing I love about this is it's quite cool to the touch, isn't it? Yeah, it's it really is. lovely In and comparison cool. with the cashmere, like side yes. to side, it does feel cool to exactly. the touch. Exactly. But just like all of these fabrics, they come in different weights. And this is actually quite a lightweight version of Melton. So if I hold that up, you can see how thin it is. Um, the coat that I referred to, I made mm. out of a much heavier weight Melton because it mm. is my winter coat. Yes. Whereas I think this one would make lovely jackets. Oh, yeah. Um, but it would also make good coats for spring and autumn when the mm. weather's changing and you don't necessarily need to be really toasty. Transitional. Um, but you need that extra uh, layer. Um, it would also sew up beautifully. It's so crisp and, and, yeah. s and smooth mm. um, and stable that I think you would be able to, uh, even a beginner sew would be able to sew really, really well with that. So yeah. I think produce really, really good results. I think you'd get quite precise sewing outfits. There's something that's got a lot of detail and things like that it would be good for. Yeah, in I'm fact, thinking lapels and yes. top stitching and exactly. things like that. And in fact, the, uh, the, the fabric that was traditionally used for Melton is a pea coat. And oh, that is okay. exactly as you described. So you do have a nice big collar. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you have your uh, little, um, I want to call epaulets. them lapels, epaulets on your shoulders as well. Uh -huh. um, double breasted, lots of buttonholes and yes. things. Um, so there is all of that detail, which means that obviously a, a flannel can, can hold those and show those off very well. You'll yes. be able to see all the details on this fabric From the really melting. well. Yeah, lovely. Um, so this one is, let me just check, 17.99 a metre. It's 56% wool. Um, and yeah. then it's a real mixture, this one. It's 56% wool, it has 27% polyester, it has 10% nylon, and it has 7% viscose. Yeah. Um, so you might wonder why we've got all of those things going on in there, but they will all be doing different things. Mm. So the wool will be giving you the warmth and the quality. Mm -hmm. um, the polyester will be making it cheaper to produce, but mm -hmm. also making it more durable. Mm -hmm. uh, the nylon will give it a slightly waterproof um, uh, quality, quality. Yeah. Um, and then the viscose will give it a little bit of drape which compared to some of the other um, yes. wool fabrics you've got quite a nice bit of drape going on there yeah fabulous and you you may find other Meltons which have a different slightly different context slightly different percentages they're not all made and mm -hmm. all of these mixtures are not all made to a precise formula no I it's also know. worth mentioning with Melton especially with some of the thicker Meltons we mentioned it on brushed cotton uh -huh. some Meltons have only been fulled or felted on the one, one side, side. Right. Um, so that is the side that you would have as the face of the garment yes. and then you would have the uh, the more sort of twill weave side on the inside is it the thinner ones which are, are, are on one side so the thicker you get you might get on double yeah, sides no no it's usually the thinner ones that are felted on both sides okay. and then it's the thicker ones that are often just done on one side okay. because um, if it was done on both sides it, it would be, be really difficult to work with. it would be more like a fleece but a fleece yes. with lots of structure yes. I think that would be quite difficult to work with um, <laughs> so that is most of the suitings the only one that I want to mention outside of that is, uh, which we don't have an example of but you will instantly know what I'm talking about is Tweed Yes. just because Tweed is such a British institution and it's not Minerva's fault. We didn't even think about asking for it. No, it wasn't on our list originally. List. Um, but especially seeing as you have your Scottish heritage. Who, me? It would be very <laughs> rude of us not to mention Harry's tweed. Harry's tweed, especially. Um, so yes. tweed is a twill weave. Um, and you get all sorts of different types of tweed. Mm -hmm. Herringbone, for instance, is a variety of tweed. Tartan yes. is a variety of tweed. Um, and uh, basically, it's a very durable mm -hmm. fabric. It was designed for workers. Yes. Um, so farm workers um, and estate workers mm -hmm. um, because it was naturally very waterproof yes. um, and warm. very warm mm -hmm. and so great for working in the outdoors. Mm -hmm. But then, when all the, the British lords started buying up all the Scottish castles... I'm just shaking my head. 
they liked all of the estate workers' uh, Go garments, but they thought, we want fancy ones. Yes. So then they started having all these interesting colours woven. Yes. And they would actually have different ones for different estates. So people would say, oh, that's that estate's tweed. Yes. Um, or names of families, they would have their own tweed. Yes. Um, and so there's a huge British history of tweed. I just find the whole it's subject really interesting. Yes, yes. Um, and it would be, f I think it's fascinating to look into the history of it. And the history of tartans as well you know the, all the families i've you know i've got a special i've got tartan which is to do with my connection to my surname which goes back to all my family and everything like that and and, and all scottish surnames will go back to a yeah. saracen tartan and they are also designed uh with special colors which have special meanings mm -hmm. and it, depending upon the check so there's a huge amount of history you can look at there if you're interested yes absolutely mm -hmm. so we hope that's been a good overview of wools if you've got any questions at all about wools if you've got any questions about the fabrics that we've mentioned please do comment below <laughs> i'm not going to get her away from no, that one I'm taking um, and uh, obviously um if there's anything that we've missed then make yeah. sure you do let us know we'll put links to all the fabrics down below um, and yes. so that you can go and find them and on all the, the other videos. websites yes um and yes, this is a series of videos, so if you've not seen them from the beginning, why not go back and watch yes. from the intro onwards. And if you've watched them from number one to now, well done! Yay! <laughs> and next up, we'll be talking to you about synthetic fabrics. Yes, I think that's one that everyone's interested in, actually, because it's quite complicated, but we'll talk you through it. Excellent. We'll see you soon. Bye! Bye!